All right, hello world. How y'all doing tonight? Hope you're doing good. I'm gonna stop complaining about the fact that I always say tonight because it's night when I'm doing it. So let's see what happens. Light up. Just a touch. There you go. A little more echoey than normal. That's because the microphone was not in front of me. Something sounded different. I knew something sounded different. Hello, everybody. Let's try this again with the microphone involved in the whole mix. Um, well, I should actually do this. Sublime text checklist. Make sure mic is set up in front of your face, because apparently I need that as a checklist. Oh, also, yeah, I skipped one because I was trying to get make sure I hit uh, an on-time departure here. But uh, let's do this. Let's do this. Oh, why not that one? Let's, I'm missing one over here. You can't see it. There we go. Uh, but the other one that I need to do is this. Localhost, GIFs, I'm at the wrong thing, Launchpad, GIFs, I don't know why it doesn't go here first, because we want to do that, drop our little GIF down here, should figure out a better way to do this, well, for one I could actually update the code that drops that uh, Chat box in. Hey, what's up, Factory? Yeah, just getting started. I'd start a little later on Fridays, I guess. The, uh, I don't know. Also a long work day, and I was trying to go through some Django tutorials over here, so uh, I didn't quite finish it, and I kept kind of pushing and pushing, yeah. Apple Script. What about Apple Script? That's what I'm using for this. Um, I'm not going to, well, actually, yeah, I should go ahead and fix it. So, keyboard maestro. All right, so here's what we can do is we can get these window coordinates right here. So that's the window coordinates. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I'm doing. Um, The, uh, so I've got this keyboard maestro thing. That's what I do all my, it's all using Apple script to burn all this stuff out um, and bounce things around. So I've got a, uh, it's kind of, let's see, here's set up for stream. Uh, actually, so set up for chat is what I need. Yeah, so it, it basically, I've got a hotkey that fires up. It runs through a collection of all the running applications. And then it runs through another loop that is looking for lines of applications names that I want to move. And then it goes through, uh, yeah, or Automator, basically fancy AverScript. Yeah, exactly. I like, so I've, I've, both Keyboard Maestro and Automator, I've used them both a little bit. And weirdly, it feels like, and this is probably just in my head, but it feels like Keyboard Maestro is a little faster than Automator. Um, and I know Launch D is faster than Automator, which is not at all the same thing. Um, but I actually need to look at the way that these loops work because um, it's not it, like if I do here, I'll show you in a second. Let me put this in first. Um, so I think I got the right window. Apple script resize. This seems weird. 508. Oh, whatever. We'll try it. 508, 140. There's no way this is the right number. Hang on. That couldn't have been the right window. Oh, yeah, hang on, that's off. Let's turn that on. Now let's try it. It's the same, there's no way that's right. Oh, Apple script on yeah, right on the. Uh, I've only done a little bit with it. It kind of freaks the syntax, kind of freaks me out a little bit. Um, 
I've been using some JavaScript for automation to experiment with that a little bit, which I can get my head around a little bit easier than the Apple script stuff. Um, Cause like I was trying to make, I don't remember which one it was. It may be one of these, I'm not sure. Um, but I was like trying to make an array of things and I wasn't really sure. I, I didn't easily find online how to do that. But then the Apple, the JavaScript stuff, it's just like, oh, you just make an array. Um, I'm, I expect that it can do it. I just didn't get to it quickly and just went to JavaScript. I still think this is wrong. What's going on? So let's move it. How about that? Are the numbers different? Whoops. Run. Yeah, those are the same numbers. It's not picking up the right window. Why is it not picking up the right window? Windows with titles containing chat, Twitch. What if we just do chat? Bring to the front, try. Okay, I brought it to the front. Display text in a window of window frame for one. Why does it feel like this isn't working? Because if I do that and I move the window all the way over here, it's giving me the same numbers. Something's wrong with that. Oh, I didn't know Apple Surf could do CGI. That's crazy. Especially like, was it like optimizer stuff? Because every time I've run it, it's kind of slow. Now, maybe that's just getting fired up because there's an engine back there. Or I don't know or whatever, but like I, I would not have expected that to have been um, server level. Of course, everything was slower in the 90s for server stuff when people are figuring it out. Why is this giving me the same numbers? Uh, let's see. Bring one to the front. I mean, it's doing that because like if I drop it back behind and I run just this one, it pops it to the front. Oh, okay, right. <laughs> if you can't do anything else, put this in there, but try to do something else. Um, Cause like if I move this one, now it's probably gonna give me a different number, right? Yeah, so it keeps picking this. I swear this worked a couple times. Well, now how do I do this? That's not helpful. Display text, cause it's giving me the text. One frame zero, is it zero indexed? Oh, don't tell me it's zero indexed. That'd be funny. Same thing. Still not giving me. I don't understand what's happening. That's not right. Uh, this worked the first time because that's how I set it up. And that's how I got these numbers. Get window coordinates, display text, window frame in window. Yeah, like they've released a whole bunch of iOS stuff recently. Like uh, I kind of dropped out of stuff when Oh, what was the name of the app that they had that everybody liked and then Apple bought them and I'm not sure what happened to them yet. Um, it'll come to me. Uh, but I, I don't have it in my head right now. I can see the icon, but I can't, uh, I can't figure it out. Oh, I've never seen these before. Variable name variable system. All right, now I want to solve this.
So... Alright, let's put a trigger on it then. Type trigger... That. But we're gonna move that up. And we're gonna tap this in here. See, now it's doing it. So it must be something... Yeah, see, I think there's some... Race condition stuff going on here. Um... Because, like, it's supposed to bring it to the window, bring it to the front, and then look at it, but... It didn't work. Bring to front. Windows containing... Like, I mean, that's it. Because it literally just did it. Well, actually, let's try this. What happens if we put it somewhere else? Whoops. Same thing. It just doesn't work when it's in text expander. Arr, keyboard maestro. Weird. I, I think I just got it. Um... For some reason, it's just not working inside Keyboard Maestro. Which is a weird... Like, I wonder if that's bugged me out on stuff before. I'll bet it has. But if I go anywhere else, it works. Whatever. So, set up for stream, set up for chat. For chat, we move the chat window. These numbers look weird. Hang on a second. These numbers don't make sense. Let's start with a 243, right? 243, 593. Oh, it's still doing whatever window you type it into. It's not. Get window coordinates. Can you like sleep for a second? Bring to front. What else do we have? Maybe you got to activate it first. Activate. I've only recently really started using Keyboard Maestro, so it's still, like, I'm impressed with it. Because when you first look at it, it's just like, what? I don't get it, but... Okay, let's see what this does. Okay, that looks like legit numbers. So, I don't know if, like keyboard meister and i don't think it was a racing thing i think that somehow even though bring windows to front here was firing and bringing this window to the front this display window of window frame was still looking at the old application and it's all yeah so some of this is keyboard meister stuff some of it's app it's like there's not any, actually any apple script in this um the apple script stuff is in uh here's one that I was trying to do just as a test because like when you're in yeah so here was just a little bit of Apple script where I was trying to fire up an active application because I only want yeah so this was the trick I only wanted to move some of the applications in and there's a couple different ways I could have done this, but I was trying to figure out if I could do it. Like, I could have just called them explicitly and then moved them. But I wanted to see if I could loop over it. So I had to create this little Apple script that as you run through the application loop, when you found an app, then you have to pass a variable into Apple script from Keyboard Maestro and then have it do the activation. Um, and that that was why it took it took me a little while to figure out how to do the, the get variable stuff, which call that's a keyboard maestro specific Apple script thing that pulls keyboard maestro variables into Apple script that then lets you do something with them. Um, so that's what that little bit did. Um, and I've had some other stuff around here that I can't remember what it was. Um, 
I don't think that's it. Um, but yeah, so, oh, so I know the other one, the other one I use is that little thing that I use to do, to grab all the, um, all the URLs that I hit. That's an Apple script thing that loops through all the windows that loops through all the tabs and all the windows creates a string with the URL in the title and then shuffles that off to Python that then does the processing. Um, yeah, janky. Fair assessment. Close that. Um, but anyway, so I've got this size now. So I can at least... Uh, set for chat. All right, so now if we run... If we run this again, that should be our coordinates. Oh, well, actually, I need to size it for real. Whoops, come here. That's probably about right. Now let's try it again. See, those numbers are very different, though. I don't understand why those are so different. Whatever. We'll see what happens. 239, 140, 268, 593. Okay, so that's the up and down the side. Okay. So let's try this. Yep. Take it easy. We'll see you around. All right, try that. Hey, it worked. That'll get us there for now. All right, what else we got? So that's cool, I like that. Uh, I guess I could make a window in Safari. Activate. We'll just see if we can actually make this thing pop up. Safari. New Safari window with URL that And then we want to resize it. Does that get any shorter? Nope. Okay, let's, yeah. Yeah, I do kind of want that. Wait, why did that work? Come here. So there's that, and now we're gonna go get our window size. Well, actually what we can do, change this to a hotkey and do slam that. Probably right. Drop that since we don't really need it right now. Uh, let's get rid of these so they're not confusing. This thing needs notes. Are there are notes in here. Or comments. Comment. Hey, look at you. Whoops. Read me. Set a hotkey. Click on the window you want. Hit the hotkey. 
Sweet. Alright, so now we can go back here, here, here. Where is our resize for chat? And really what we should do is see, um, move and resize, whoops. Resize window. And they're like a move and resize. Move window, resize window. Resize by, there we go, move and resize, custom. Front window, front application, front window, Safari. How about that? I mean, we just launched it, so it should be. Two, three, nine. 721, 574, 241, 241, 241. All right, so, oh, you can select. So let's see, I'm gonna close this and try these. Ah, that's cool. That is cool. And that's fine. Um, well, I guess we could actually move it in right there, All right? Yeah, I wish there was a way to make a smaller Why is that all shifted off to the side? Resize my browser. I wonder what that is. Hmm, makes a new window for that size. That's cool. But I want this one. Wonk is smaller. There we go. Oh, this is for... Yeah, so I, I think there's a small size of Safari. So I wonder if there's... Um... I wonder, like, how else would you display a, a GIF outside? Because um, Chrome does the same thing, Firefox does the same thing, where you can't resize down. Um, display a GIF background Mac. Give us wallpaper. Yeah, but it would still like you need. Oh, I know what we need is Mac web page as background. Why is this all shifted to the side so much? What's going on? Weird, it's not 
doing the responsive thing. Yeah, see, I don't want to install an app to do this. Ooh, Geek Tool. I forgot about Geek Tool. Is that still a thing? Yeah, so you could do Geek Tool and do that. I don't know that I want to install Geek Tool again. Um, Yeah, see, it's been around for a long time. But like, I'm just wary of installing more software on my machine. Um, Mac, web page, desktop. Hacker desktop shortcuts to what now? Flash is free in the Mac App Store. See, I don't like free apps. Like where, I wanna know where they make their money. Yeah, see this is the problem, it won't cost me a penny, but like where do they make their money? Possibly this is just somebody making a thing that they like. Full-time open sourcer, inspiring rebel. Huh. So. Full-time open sourcer, huh? What is this? Community of curated awesome lists on GitHub. Okay. Account tweets new GitHub repos from dude. All right, I'll follow that. So, Keyboard shortcuts. Can you do the escape key? In case carabiner ever goes away on me? Oh, okay, so this is drop in for actually doing it inside stuff. Um, all right, I'll give this a shot. Oh, blog, let's see what this blog is. 
is all medium. Medium is not happy at the moment. Nothing's happy at the moment. What was that app called? Plash? Read more. Oh, no way. It is open source. I love that. Uh oh, what version of Mac do I have? Oops, that wasn't it. 1014, oh, okay. So maybe this will actually get me to upgrade like that might actually get me to upgrade to 1015 right is whatever the new version is is coming out oh that's a bummer um man that legitimately like might, might get me to update Does Plash have its own? Twitter. That's yeah, super cool. Cause like I can, I can have my own website. So I don't see my desktop very often, but like I don't know. I really want to put a GIF right there. <laughs> um, I don't see a Twitter for it. Where is he? Ooh, that's all kind of broken. Where's the actual... I should probably do the homepage. Nah, we're going to the Git repo. Okay, that was a little bit of a thing. So let me, there was something else I was gonna do with Keyboard Maestro and I can't remember what it was. Um, but we're placing that in now, so that's good. Ah, yeah, that's fine, that's all good. 
Um, at some point, I want to see if I don't do this in the loop, if it runs faster. I'm sure it will. Um, but like, this is fine for right now. Uh, don't wonder how long it would take me to redo that, right? Because you're just doing. Yeah. Um... Nah, I'll do those so that we don't need to see that on stream. Um... Cool. All right. So now what are we actually going to do? What are we actually going to do? We're actually going to uh, work on the Hugo site. So uh, we are at 36 minutes. I need to redo this template. Um, oh, I guess that's actually part of working on the Hugo site. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to redo this template a little bit. Um, All right. So this comes from stream notes. And stream notes actually comes from uh Well, I don't know where stream notes comes from. Comes from comes from this page, stream manager, stream manager, stream notes, launchers, make Hugo stream notes page. So launchers, make Hugo stream notes, there we go. So live stream notes for date, live coding, yeah, that's cool. So I wanna do timestamps, I think this is the way I want to do it. And then links from the stream. Yeah, that's probably good. No, so actually I can look. I didn't do stream minutes last night because I didn't post it just because there was a couple times when uh, I'm fairly certain I didn't flash any credentials, but I was doing a bunch of stuff with credentials. And so I'm just I'm not 100% confident because I was, was kind of tired. So we're just going to let that one go. Uh, yeah, timestamps. There you go. Is this? I see this. What if we do this way? Instead of bold, we make it italicized or emphasized or whatever the uh, proper term is. Hmm. What if we just do it normal? Maybe take it out of the brackets. It's better in the brackets. Maybe just as the. Oops. I am sick of this music.
Maybe if it's not bullets and there's separation there. What about that? Ooh, okay. Yeah, that's better. That's the way to do it. And now, what if we make it bold again? The bullets with the bold. Eh. Interesting name. And even crazier. Does that work? Nope. I like that. It's weird to me that there's not a... That like just doing that doesn't get you a break. That's the way to do it. Okay, found it. Yeah, I like that a lot. Timestamp. So that would be the format. Uh. I'm just going to edit this one over here. Time. 36. Break. Updating my Hugo site. Oh, yeah, that's actually what we're doing. It's always weird with these notes because I keep trying to figure out like what's the right. I don't know. Getting getting into them is always a little bit tricky because I can't always remember and like sometimes I kind of go all over the place. Sometimes they keep me on track. So. So that should pop the show notes here, right? Show notes. Oops. Question is, why is that look bold? It doesn't anymore. It did for a second. I don't know why. Oh, uh, I don't need that. Or that. Okay, so that's our template. all that. Oh, that's what actually builds it. Don't mess with all that. Forgot about all that stuff. Uh, you know what we should do, though? I'm just going to go here, because that's the easiest way to get... Oh, oh yeah, I'm bouncing back. I set it to bounce back to the right directory. So, which uh, launch pad? HTML prod, git, add dot, git, commit, update stuff. Um, we're going to do this. New gif. Make sure it still works. There we go. Oh, that one's all fried. I see all we got. That's kind of cool. I like it. Oh, but we lost. Interesting. We lost that. Guess I'll upgrade to ten fifteen this weekend. Uh. Okay. Cool. I changed my Lorem Ipsum, Apparently. Interesting. 
Uh, okay, sweet. So that's there. We got those going. Ooh, actually, you know what's funny? I want to change... I actually want to make the timestamps less bold. Now that I think about it. Um, which I don't know how to do that in the markdown. I guess I'm just going to span it. Inspect element. What's our coloring? Post info. I guess we call it post info and see what happens. Post dash info. All right, let's see what happens. Uh, is that today? Edit. Span class. Post info. Probably want to finish that quote. What's that going to look like? For one, we want to do time stamps. That's funny, it's actually might want to keep the bold. Uh, that didn't work at all. Yeah, I kind of like the bold with the gray. I do like the bold with the gray. One could actually make a new class for this, which would be the appropriate way, but one is not going to do that at this point in time. That's cool. Yeah, that'll be enough for now. I'd like to have a little more padding in there, um, but that'll be fine for now. Um, so that's cool. We're good there. Oh, I should have kept that open. Oh, well. I can open it again. Boop. And then where is our page? Launchers, launch stream notes. So we want to change these. There's our time stamps. Okay. Yeah, that's probably enough of that. Okay. So now the other thing that I wanted to do, so I ran page insights. Oh, look at that circle. Kind of freaked out. Um, Got to turn that down just a little bit. Doesn't have sufficient real world speed data for this page. Oh, like, yeah, not a lot of people hit my site. That's fine. So I ran I ran this on my site, which my site, right, is just that. So not a whole lot going on. Um, and I still, I think I'm going to play with the CSS a little bit because I'm still not, the balance still feels off to me a little bit. Um, but of course... It's really different because that's what it actually looks like. I just do this for the stream, so for smaller browsers or people looking at on smaller windows or whatever. But still with that, 
so yeah performance difference 2016 so and this is super doesn't matter with my site but um Using style attribute, the browser only paints the rule for that particular element, in which case, div. Reduce amount of time to look up the CSS engine. Wait, so what's the... A friend of mine said that using div style instead of compressed CSS file, what is an href at the head section gives some performance boost. This is not really where I'm headed. Putting style results at the element level, we need to lose track of what elements of style would be. Yeah. Um. Not to forget when you have an external CRM, your browser can cache the file, which increases the application. Yeah. The page will load faster if you use inline styles or style sheets. The only real reason is, yeah, but that's not true because there's also caching. Yeah. So I wonder if you could do the both, like on your home page. Have um, it's not an easy question to answer because performance in this case depends on many factors: complexity, CSS, document size, etc. However, if we take an isolated case, then we can see the CSS class is generally faster than inline style. I'm st I'm actually I'm not worried about that. Um, oops. Jazzpref.com. Ah, whatever. And these are old, right? Yeah, 2013. Um, inline versus internal versus yeah. See, it's 2011. Here, 2017. So I'm gonna I'm gonna flip them to it. So here's really what's going on, is I really should read through all this, but I'm not gonna do that on the stream. Um, I have sound here. Oh yeah. So the warnings that I got. We're down here. So resources are blocking the first pane of your page. Consider delivering critical CSS, JS CSS inline, and defer all non-critical JavaScript and styles. And so that's this. And like, it's gonna say, I mean, it's gonna save a second. Yeah, so 1.62 seconds, and my page took 2.5 to load. Like percentage-wise, that's huge. Um, Yeah, which URLs get flagged as render blocking resources? Lighthouse flags two types of render blocking, script and style sheets. A script tag that is in the head, doesn't have a defer, doesn't have an async. How do I identify critical resources? So some real inline code and in script, inline critical styles required for first paint inside a style block in the head of the HTML page. Then load the rest of the styles async using the preload link. Defer on UCSS. Consider automating the process of extracting and inlining above the fold CSS using critical tool. What's this?
see like there's there's a big art to all this stuff um i am just going so the somewhere in here so i don't do this stuff for a living anymore um but i'm still kind of interested in it and i want my site to move so Ensure text remains visible during watch So this is one that they got me on too. Ensure text remains visible during web font load. Leverage the font display CSS feature to ensure the text is user visible while web fonts are loading. It might happen so fast apparently that it doesn't it doesn't make a difference. But it also I go back and forth on that because it's like. What that can mean is your font loads in and so you see text, but then it like changes. And I kind of don't like that blink. Um, so I may not address that one. I don't know. Um, I'm debating about whether or not I want to go for like a hundred up here. Cause I think I'd have to do both those things. Um, but resources blocking the first paint. Okay. So let's, let's figure out the style sheet. Um, and then the font, I don't know how to deal with the font. I guess maybe that is, if you do that, this, it gets you there. How to eliminate render blocking scripts. So it's not a script, I got a problem. Render blocking style sheets, right? So basically what I need to do is just throw all the CSS. Into. Then an immediate attribute to each link the style sheet. When loading the page, the browser only blocks the first paint to retrieve the style sheet that matches the user's device. Render blocking CSS. But I really like the idea of just like have deliver everything you need for the page in the page. Um, and like you lose the caching a little bit, but like the file size is going across the wire. Like I, I, that's the trick that I don't know. Like how many milliseconds is that? And again, like for the stuff that I'm doing, like, but still, um, I do like the idea though of getting that, getting that second call down. Um, and so I started playing with this a little bit today. Um, so we're going to jump into Hugo here. Let's get to the right app. There we go. Um, so it's in themes, in tail, which is the name of my theme, not T T A L E, not T A I L in layouts, partials head. So I made, I've got the original copy here because I, I want to keep it and keep it out of version control or whatever. But then there's this one and I might've closed the page, <coughs> but I can find it. Because I have all my page links for the day. Um, Because what, what I'm going to do I don't know what this one's doing, but I'm just going to take both of these out. Actually, what? <laughs> just out of curiosity. So I'm in head right now. What if we just delete these? What does the page do? It looks awful. It's kind of funny. There's my unstyled page. Let's maybe put that back in. Just funny, but just that little, like it's not doing that much, but those little changes make a whole lot of difference. Uh, all right, where, oh, I think I lost, I must've lost it. Um, uh, let's see if I can find 
earlier today. At least in time order. Well, let's do this. This may be. Uh, I go over here with that. You go serve with the future. Give it a second. Give it another second. Here's the pages. CSS. You go inline CSS. Optimate. Optimize. Blah de blah de blah. Where that page go? Here it is. Yeah, so this is this is where I found what I found. So with basically, I'm just going to copy all this because um, there's two. It's doing two things. I'm going to put this right here. So with resources, get SCSS styles. And then I noticed that this up here has resources, scss tail.scss. So assets. So this must be hitting in the assets directory, scss tail scss. So we want that. So we're taking the two, the C scss going to CSS and minifying it. And then we create a style tag. I don't know why that's there. Dot content is the contents of the thing that we just made it made, which was the minified to CSS SCSS. And we pass it to safe SCSS. So like that's quotes are okay. It figures out how to deal with quotes and it just outputs it. And then we end. And then the other one that's, a, that's available there, right, is with just regular CSS, you would do the same thing. I'm not using CSS, I'm using SCSS. So we can get rid of this. CSS break one. CSS break two. I just want to see, I want to wrap around this line and see if anything's actually showing up in there. Um, and then under two, between two and fave icon uh, is where we will expect to see. That's the wrong page. Sources. I'd rather see that because that way we see the actual source. Wait, where are those comments? Why aren't those comments there? What just happened? Just broke. Oh, I know what happened. My page refreshed. Or my link updater refreshed. So there's all the styles. Why aren't they minified? Oh, because it's on localhost. I think. Get resources, SCSS. To CSS. CSS options conditioned in server mode. Stick target path, enable source map, true. CSS target map, is that what that was called? Source map. Valid question. A source map is a special file that connects a minified, uglified version of assets to the original authored version. Okay, that's 
okay, I thought that might be what that is. Because, like, when you do... When I go to the live site, if I inspect an element... Yeah, keyboard cam. And do you see the what's in the lower left? Did you try it? Right. <laughs> I'm committed, man. I'm committed. Oh, that couldn't have worked better. <laughs> Magic. I got to resize him a little bit. Because um, he keeps... I got to find out the right size. Because the gifts are all different size, so... Yeah, right. I will congratulate the bot on its AI capability of choosing the right thing um, and totally freaking me out. Uh, but no, how, how was how was all the Hubble Blue last night? Did that? I was in the chat for a little bit, but was just I was kind of watching the debate. Kind of wasn't, but um, did who won? I guess is the question. Uh, let's find this. All right, so here's here's the real question. Now, if we take all this shit out, does it work? Yeah, totally. So this is actually part of this is actually my. I don't know if you've seen this before, but so this is my little personal web page that I've got, and I've got this gifts page that is what I do to pick stuff and then like when I click on one uh what it does so those are all resized thumbnails when I click on one it opens up this page and gives me just that one with the full size version of it um so yeah I could resize this stuff and there's different um uh there's different ways to kind of like fire it around but like right now it's actually not an OBS it's sitting on my it's on my machine um but uh, yeah, like all that stuff is possible. It's on alpha. Uh, I don't know, maybe. There's an alien, oh, right. Is that what you mean? Yeah, the, well, it's funny because what I was looking for was, um, Uh, a, it used to be that you could put a web page as your background in Macs. I think maybe it was just Windows, but like there's some software out there that lets you do that now for Mac, but it only works with the next version of the operating system. Well, it's it's like a year old now. I just never updated to it, but like I'm seriously considering upgrading to it just so I can do that and then put the GIFs and stuff down there. Ah, perfect. But yeah, I've got the bot wired up. So like game on with that basically um as as i come up with things and thoughts of what to do the and it's it was super simple like um i mean most of the like it was basically just getting the code directly from uh twitch or uh, yeah this twitch io group firing up putting your credentials in and then doing a little something with it like i mean right there is basically all the code that i wrote to do that Yeah, the whole, yeah, the whole thing's 65, um, and of that, I wrote maybe 20. Um, it took a couple hours to get there because it wasn't, I didn't make it to this script first. I was bouncing around other places because the searches I was doing just didn't land me here. Um, but it was actually somebody on chat who was like, have you tried Twitch.io? And I was like, no, that sounds delightful. And turns out it is. Yeah, well, so, I mean, there's there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes on behind the scenes. Like, it's it's a module. So, like, this from twitch.io.ext import commands 
there's a lot of files underneath there, like a lot of lines. But what it does is it just um, abstracts all that stuff away so that all I have to do is like, oh, and this git, sorry, this git credentials is mine too. Um, yeah, and that's that's programming. I mean, that's that's what it is, is. You just keep looking at these layers of abstraction and you try and basically make interfaces so that all I have to do is say, like for this git credentials, like that does some kind of magic with some encryption, but all I have to do is say, give me a credential and then it hits that boundary it goes and does whatever it needs to do, and then it passes me the thing back. So it's all about those those interfaces, basically, is what it is. Um, and when other people spend a lot of effort on it, you try and make a really good interface for really complicated things. Um, and that's where, like, that's the state of how things go, basically. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, and it's 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 wild too because you don't it it really you don't have to know that much about programming. I don't think like I I know like I'm so steeped in it, but like I mean one I could walk you through how to do this and get you set up and teach you enough to continue doing stuff. So it's basically like you don't have to completely understand all the things I'm going to show you. You can just kind of copy and paste. And then when you want to do something that's like one of the things that you've already done, you've got a template to look at and then work from there. Yeah, and so Python is is actually is pretty straightforward. Um, the hang on, let me find. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so commands command so i want to make a new command this is actually the one that you're using right now the name of that command is new gif asynchronous just means whatever it's going to do it on its own, on its own term but then we're going to define new gif the self and the ctx is basically just stuff that gets passed to it but then you see the ctx sent and ctx is basically like the the interface and so it says send on it so you'll notice when you type new gif it says on it and then gifs, and then this glob just goes and looks at all my gifs in this directory, in this in this folder. Makes a random choice. Uh, drops the random choice in. And then this writes the web page. So with open, and then w is to write as a display page. Then you come back here and you say display page, I want to write to it. And then here's all the junk I want to write to it. And then we drop the GIF in right here. And that format talks to that. And there's the, the new file path. And that's it. So like, and like that was super fast. And like, this isn't where you would start if you're teaching somebody how to program. Because um, like some of this stuff is a little bit complicated. Like, like most of the time you don't need these or this. And like this await stuff is all different. Like I don't even totally understand what that's doing. Um, I kind of know, um, but not really. But again, I don't, I don't have to. Like, this just kind of works, and I know all I got to do is fill in some of these with whatever I want, and and make it happen. So, it really, it's pretty, it's pretty solid, and it's actually running off IRC. I I think you did IRC back in the day, right? Um, that's what that's the protocol that they're using for all this stuff. which is cool. Yeah, right. Oh yeah, and you notice too, so the this is actually where the bot is running. So you can see it's pulling in your text here. Like it actually has the interactions that's, that are going on down there as well as over here in chat. And that's, so the cool thing about that, right, is that gives me the capability of instead of using this chat, I can throw this text anywhere I want it. Um, like I could have it, you know, show, I could actually have it showing up down here as just the last line or doing whatever. So it's, it, you know, it gives you the, the raw material. Um, it strips away everything else and just gives you the raw things that you need. And then from that, you can do whatever you want with it. Um, it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm, I'm liking it. I still, so my next thing is that music thing that I've been talking about, um, which I spent some time on the YouTube API last night and got it going. But I kind of don't want to build that on stream because that like, that might actually turn into a thing. So I'm not going to do that on stream. <laughs> it's it's almost certainly not going to turn into a thing, but like, eh. 
Um, but yeah, no, it's it's fun. I like uh, I like I like the code. I'm enjoying the coding, and the code. Uh, and now I'm trying to figure out how to make. Oh uh, yeah, so I ran my uh, I ran my site through a site analyzer, and I'm at 95th percentile. And then, whoops, hang on. Uh, yeah, I, I scored 95 out of 100, right? Um, page feeds insights. Is that it? Why can't I get back to the home page? Come here. Go to this calling the function kind of thing. I can't help but see the parallels here between the shift from dust to windows, coding to this calling the function kind of thing. Uh, yeah, so I mean, at, at some level, if I'm following you, like DOS was all command line stuff. Is that where you're headed versus the Windows stuff, which is all the GUI interface? And like on DOS, you would like write commands that call functions. Is that you know, following you? Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, okay, I can see what you're saying, yeah. Um, the, oh yeah, by the way, so here's that other site that has a slightly different score. Um, now granted, it's doing way more, but I just, I find it hysterical. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, they, I actually had some conversations they asked me to come back in and kind of consult a little bit. Um, so whatever. Um, I mean, it is what it is. It's doing a bunch of stuff. Like it's, that is how a lot of sites are these days. Um, I have thoughts about that, but, um, yeah, uh, it's, it's not the best. Um, and they're, they're increasingly aware of it. Um, so, uh, We'll talk more about that offline. <laughs> uh, oh, here we go. Yeah, we can do that. Oops, went to the wrong place. Oh, it didn't like that. Oh, weird. I don't think they have... Uh... I don't know why it's not letting me stop, cancel, quit. That part went fast. <laughs> it's probably going to because you don't have ad trackers on there or like you don't have ads on there. That's one of the biggest things, right? Um, or the, I'm assuming you don't have ads on there. Um, yeah, 25. See, you're doing all right for comparison sake. Um, but it's, the ads is one of the biggest things. But like, if you're an advertising supported site, you got to have ads. And so there's this whole balance of like where you walk down it. Um, oh yeah, so you can see, hang on a second. Um, give this one a second. Here, I'm gonna drop that down so we can actually see it. This one may take a minute. Um, But yeah, all kinds of all kinds of trackers are used for all over things. But like, it's it's kind of interesting because like, there's been some stuff like in the government sites, they have to be pretty strict about that stuff. Um, apparently, in terms of like what they can track, how they can track it, um, because it all becomes record, and they just have to kind of watch out. Like, there was some stuff for a while with like people were doing like online forums and they were putting in like, you know, various personal pieces of information. But like, because of the way the system was structured, it had that had to become public record for a while. It's like, it was just one of those things with the tech, where the the bureaucracy aspect hadn't caught up with the fact that the tech it was like these things should not be public. But they hadn't caught up with the fact that it was like going through this form, and that form was defined as whatever. Um, uh, is this the one? Oh wait, what's the one? No, it wasn't the right one. Um, Joe web trackers. 
the one that I'm thinking of? Ghost Ghosterly. I can't remember. Um, I think it was Ghosterly. One of them showed you would just like list all the trackers. Now I'm curious. I want to see if I can find it again. I don't remember what it was. If I find it, I'll send it up to you. Um, Yeah, it's weird that that's not, of course, Google's probably pushed it down all over the place. Um, wait, I saw that web page test one open. Yeah, whatever. Um, oh, did I close web page test? It's a bummer. Oh, wait, is that it? That looks like web page chest. Yeah. So um, somewhere on here, it'll show you. So here's St. John's URLs. Here's Google Ad Manager. Or oh, sorry, Google it. Google Tag Manager. Sorry. There we go. Um, which is one. Facebook Connect uh, gets you platform APIs from Share This. That gets you. MDHV, um, there, yeah, so there's, there's a bunch of, uh, Google static, Demdex, whoever that is, like, there's some things, there's, there's some stuff out there that'll, like, walk you through, like, here's, here's all the, all the pages, oh, ad roll, so you do do some ad stuff, apparently, um, pixel.advertising.com, ad roll.com, I think all the yellow stuff is busted, I can't remember. Yeah, double click. That's an ad thing. So you do have ads on there too. Yep. That kind of surprises me. I don't see ads. Weird. I don't know. Who knows? Um, you advertise yourselves? Yeah. Um, but no, it's, I mean, this, this kind of stuff. So you have, yeah, so you have 80. So that has 82. I'll tell you, here's where, um, uh, the other site will get you a little bit, beat you. Last time I looked, it was around, well, and actually just cause we're here. I should open these in new windows so I can find them. Um, of course my site is, you know, that so not not quite a fair comparison but still uh on the web that is the thing so yeah um oh my security score is f i don't cache content okay yeah uh where's the thing speed index 0.8 seconds yeah the total time to render that was 0.8 seconds um let me see where did the other one go Yeah, I really, I've been looking for a design like that for years. Um, so I, uh, I can't get to my old site anymore. Um, like I kept trying to get like less and less stuff cause it's, I like it. Um, and so I was going through the, that Hugo software that I use now. Um, I was just going through all the themes and I, I saw that and the, the original theme was close. I had to do some work on it. Um, but it got me like, you know, 90% of the way there. And I just was able to bang around on a little bit. Like I've still got a couple things that I want to do that I'm probably going to do tonight with like changing the font sizes a little bit and just getting it a little more pleasing to my eye. Um, so, but yeah, it's, um, it, it's always 
kind of in flux, but like it's so like I've got it so close to the point where I don't like worry about it because for the longest time I was like, ah, just not what I want it to be. And now it's just like, it's pretty good. I can still tweak it, but like it's pretty good. Um, uh, so let's see how many requests their site has. That number, these are individual file calls to load a single web page. 344. That is a lot. Um, again, they're they're working on it, um, and I'm gonna help them work on it a little bit. But it's uh, it's that's what that that's not out of whack for lots of bigger sites. Um, it just it still blows me away coming from back in the day that like, you know, the size of these sites is incredible. Um, I mean, yeah, it's three meg. It's three get yeah, three meg. Like, that blows me away. Um, Yeah, the and that's another thing like with my thing like I really I just want I want less interruption less whatever um, and then the other thing that I've got going is uh, I've got a couple things that make it easy so like these things so I have to like edit files directly on my computer there's not really a web interface but so I've started kind of making a web interface for myself like these will launch new pages for me and open them up and split them out and then like if I need to edit a page, um, I've put in these edit links. So like I built these talking to, my, to a, another internal website that launches the file for me so that then I can actually edit it, save it, and it'll autom automatically update it and, and go. So like if it wasn't for that stuff, I would have been even more like it's kind of a pain to work with a static site um, without a content management system. So I'm kind of building my own content management system as I go, um, which makes it way better. Um, yeah, three megs is nuts. But again, that's just like, it's a bunch of, it, like it's it's a content rich site with images and ads. That's what you get. Um, the, and so that's, and that's kind of what, like that look is what's currently in style. Um, there are things they could do better and they're they're working to do them better but it's again it still just messes with me in general because it's like my site you know again whatever is that still open uh mine's seven kilobytes so oh sorry 35 kilobytes uh oh wait did we get the fully loaded size for them we may not it may have been even bigger Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't see this. It's uh, it's nine mag fully loaded. <laughs> Which is just blows me away. Um, yeah, three. You thought three megs was impressive. Try nine. Uh, yeah. So that's that's always a fun ride for me. Um, I I seriously. Well, so. I'm probably get in trouble for this, but I actually did some optimization exercises a while ago where I would actually, I just kept removing stuff off of the homepage and you could just watch the time go zoop, so much faster. Um, and like I took, right, you take it to the extreme and you're basically like, here's, here's a homepage with nothing but the word PGA tour on it. But like you, it helps to kind of give the idea of, okay, when we add these things, this is what it adds and how it affects the user performance is that thing that we just added worth it? Because the the way that every site that I've ever known has worked on, like you just keep adding stuff all the time and messing around with other, but it's it's very rare that you actually kind of go through and look at the individual elements and see how they impact. Um, and it, cause it takes, that takes time and effort. Um, and it's, it's not something that a lot of people spend time and effort on unless that is your specific job or like companies do that, but rarely do people inside of companies have that. Um, so it's a, it's its own art, um, basically. Yeah, composition. That's that's exactly right. Um, and it's and the other aspects too of it are starting with so starting with your end goal right in mind, um, and that's something that they actually do work on. Right, is the idea of, of serve the tour fan, um, and then the other part of it is that I really like the, the idea of is coming up with budgets. 
So you can have, uh, you know, a design budget or an advertising budget, not for money, but for, you know, bandwidth, basically. And you say, look, I don't care what you do as long as like we're going to give you this budget. So you can you can move this many kilobytes as long as they move at this particular speed and it only affects the rendering of the site by this much. Do whatever you want, but you can't cross that. Um, the the trick, of course, is that works up until it's like one of those like, well, that's great, but also we've got this other ad that if we put on, we make this much more money. And they're like, hmm, that sounds good. Um, which, I mean, that's, there's no argument really against that um, up to a point uh, when there are some places where you kind of cross the threshold where you're like, hey, we're going to put a giant, giant thing that takes over the whole page. It's like, well, that's not really that's not really in line with the brand, basically, is what it comes down to. So it's all it's all up in the air. But I mean, it's a business, so it's a business, um, which is one of the other reasons that I like doing this stuff is I'm not both my site and this stuff and the stuff that I'm working on in general to not have that associated. And so like it was it's actually funny that um, uh, what was it called? I just looked at it. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so something that was super cool. Mac, desktop, web, browser. So we're at the same page. So I already lost it, but I think it's going to be here. So I, I was looking for, for that software to make um, Oh, why isn't that there yet? So that's my browser. No, wait a minute. Where'd it go? Should have been here. Oh, here we go. It's this guy's blog. Um, See if I can find it. Where is this thing? Apps. So I was looking for that this browser thing, and the first page that I saw on it was like on some website, some magazine website. It's like, hey, check out this thing out, blah blah blah. And it's like, and it's for free. And as soon as I hear that, I get like I go on my back feet a little bit. Cause it's like, okay, if it's free, then I'm the product. I was like, okay, I'll go ahead and take a look at it and just see if, like, I'll see if I can figure out how they're making their money. Because, like, maybe it's free, but you can pay them five bucks and they turn ads off or something. We started looking at this and then clicked around more and then hit read more and it goes to GitHub. This thing's actually open source. Like, this cat sits, sits here and makes this pretty amazing thing for free. And he's got, like, a Patreon or something up. But, like, holy crap. I really love it was kind of what we were talking about earlier. Like, I really love that there are things out there and people who are making that happen because this thing looks awesome. Um, so that gets like I, I really I'm super interested in that, basically, um, and, and seeing how that works and goes and all that jazz. Because uh, I really I want to have this. I'm going to have to I'm going to up. I'm literally going to upgrade my operating system, which I've intentionally not done for a while because shit always breaks so that I can get this piece of software on my machine so that I could put that GIF in the corner. It's free. I've never seen, so I've never seen a, uh, what's your thing? Uh, it, I've never seen it. Ha. I should, I think watch those. Cause isn't, um, you saw a clip and that was enough. Yeah. You're not into the scary stuff, right? Oops, I already had one of those open. I've got two open. Yeah, I, I kind of used to like it, but now it's... I've got enough crazy shit in my head. I don't need other crazy shit in my head. So I don't want that in my head. It's not, not my thing. Um, and I've got no problem with that. No problem with that at all. Uh, where am I going? Here. Uh, 
yeah, the... And also, I just don't watch much stuff anymore. Like, I kind of work, and then I kind of do this, and then I kind of go to bed. And I'm 100% okay with that. I would like to read more. Like, I've got some books. But I keep doing this until I go to bed. <laughs> so it's like, oops. All right, well, the good news here. Yay, here's our inline styles. And our uh, our style sheets didn't get called. So our network call should look pretty slick. Yeah, so... Yep, cool, man. Have a good evening. We'll see you next time. Or around. Yeah, whatever. It's fine. Um, the uh, I enjoy it. Are you streaming tomorrow? Or wait, when you say you'll be on tomorrow. All right, see ya. Uh, so there's a dock. Oh, gotcha. Right on. <laughs> nice. Have fun. We'll talk to you soon. R really? It's just the little Logitech one. I think yours looks fine. All right. Seriously. Later. We'll see you next time. We'll talk about it next time. No, you say goodbye. Ugh. Uh, why isn't it showing me a time frame there? Um. Ooh, that's ugly. That's okay. Uh, let's see what else we got. Okay, so this, that, that throws the style in. Okay, that's cool. Now the question is, how? Like, I want to know about this font stuff. Because that was another one that. Oops. Website established, all right. Localhost. It's funny to me, oh, wait, maybe you gotta refresh it while it's in there? Oh, there we go. Whatever, six seconds, six milliseconds. Six milliseconds, that's pretty fast, but it's, of course, sitting on the server. CSS, itch, okay, so that's hitting the fonts. So, yeah. And why? Do we have two fonts called? See, it's a hundred, so 124 megas, me megaseconds, milliseconds, 153 milliseconds, 59, whatever. Yeah, the CSS is calling the font. So what actually happens? I just want to see what happens if we turn that off. Also, why aren't my um See, it's not actually awful. And why aren't the comments showing up? Because I feel like the comments should show up. Comments aren't showing up there. Any sources? How about this? Get rid of that. Hmm. 
Yeah, why don't... Oh, does it take out the comments? I bet it does. Yeah, Hugo, just Hugo remove comments. Hugo comment strip, I've been here before. All HTML comments are deleted. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if it's easy fix. Go template package perfectly. Purposely strips comments. Yeah, okay. That's why I was confused. Okay, but that's cool. So. I don't like that as much. Except I can't tell the difference all of a sudden. Hey, Java. Um, so right now I'm just kind of messing around with my website. I'm taking uh, some CSS stuff. So I went to Page Insights. And one of the things it told me was that I'd be better off inlining CSS. Um, like my site's super simple. Like there's nothing to it. It's just text. Um, but it's still got this render blocking uh, call to the CSS and to the font. So I'm just playing around with possibly taking that out. Um, well, I'm, I'm going to inline the CSS, so I've kind of already done that. Um, and now I'm playing with the font to see what I think about it. Uh, oops, why is that? I've got too many things open. That should be there. Uh, so that's that's kind of where we're headed. Um, and I thought I was seeing something different with the font, but now I'm not 100 sure I am. Uh, I've looked at these things, and so like the size of these browsers is all crazy for me now because I keep it large for the stream. Um, so I'm actually gonna bang it down a little bit so I can see what's going on. And then we're gonna comment this out. And that didn't make any difference at all. Now, the only question is, I don't know if that's because it's cached. Yeah, it's I, I'm a huge fan of Hugo, like I've been loving it. See, that's the same. I don't think that font was doing anything. Yeah, I like uh, PageSpeed's Insights. That's that's a new one for me. I, I found it, I don't know, a while ago, but haven't really messed with it. Um, I've kind of got out of the web game for a while. I'm still out of the web game. Um, but there's an, and there's another one that I, that I couldn't remember that I was trying to think of. It wasn't web page test, but yeah, whatever. So PageSpeed page in, Insights pretty good. And they've got a whole bunch of stuff that they've added over the past year or two with the core met core web metrics or whatever um, that I've just learned about today, actually. So if that's what got me thinking about this stuff a little bit. Um, see, is this the same? Feels like that's the same. It is the same. So how is it? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by web and desktop scores, like mo like mobile app versus desktop, or like mobile phone versus desktop, mobile versus whatever phone. Um, oh, gosh. Gotcha. Uh, where are you doing the where are you doing your test run on? I don't know which tool you're using. It's page speeds insight or something else.
Oh, page feeds insight. Okay, cool. Um, I haven't actually tried it. Or I didn't pay attention. Hang on, it's thinking. Is there a... Is, uh, nope. Where do you flip it? Oh, desktop right there. I see. It says it very big right there. Uh, so 95 mobile. Uh, it looks like 99 desktop. So doing okay on desktop. Oh, I'm all green. So what's the one thing it doesn't like? Yeah, the CSS again. And then that, that font. Which I'm looking for because I don't... It's sure... I commented it out and it sure... Unless it gets called somewhere else. But this is, oh, CSS family. That's not the same one. Okay, so it's being called somewhere else too. Or something else is calling it. Whoops, that was the wrong button. No, that's it. Um, so I've got a little deployer that I wrote, like the most simple deployer in the world. Um, the so I've got this little function that I put in my um, uh, my bash file. Uh, oh, deploys on command. Yeah, so I, I do it slightly differently. Like when I'm ready to go, um, and actually I can fire it up now. Uh, I just do HD, and then it runs through this little bash script that like switches to the directory, makes a commit of whatever. Cause I, I don't do like super big tracking of my git commits on this. Like it was a real project, um, builds the site and then fires it up. Uh, and it takes me back to wherever I was. Um, so that's, it's running right now, but, um, whoops. Here's the, so yeah. So get the current working directory and hang on to it. Go into my Hugo prod directory, run Hugo add all the files that have changed, do a commit to like auto commit. And then this is where I ship up to Amazon. Uh, I, I host it off S S3. Uh, then I run a cloud and cloud front and validation for the caching. And then I go back to the, to the directory. Um, so it's a good, like it's super easy. Um, doesn't do anything complicated, but then again, it's just, you know, it's just shoving, shoving files up. Um, and like, Oh, so with, with the Git stuff, like that just catches all the publications. Like I still use Git like when I'm messing with the stuff. So like when I'm doing this changing of the style sheets and stuff, I'll still actually do that like I'm doing development. Um, <laughs> it's, thank you. It's tough to do. <laughs> it really kind of is a hard thing to do because like in my brain, you're over here and then, oh, I wonder if I should put, oh, you wouldn't be able to see the chat. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out how to make that easier to do. Oh, you know what? Um, I could do that. Oh, I could do that with a little bot. Yeah, so I've got a little bot that I built. I built, I grabbed some code off the web. Um, that you can see down here actually has the the text that's coming through chat. I could actually throw that up right by the camera because um, I've got a little I've got more space than you're seeing up above it. Um, and that would make that a lot easier. Um, I think I'm going to do that. I'm trying to decide if I want to do that right now. Well, I could actually actually yeah, I could just do that right now. Hang on. Um, because I could make it go into a very small window. Right. Yeah. Welcome to Zoom, right? Um, <laughs> I am one of those people who keeps my camera off on Zoom most of the time. Um, mainly because my, my laptop, so I stream off of a stream PC or whatever. So that's all wired up here. My work computer that I'm actually working off of is, is way over there. So the camera's way over there and I don't have to wire up another camera. So yeah, um, I can get away with that though. Like nobody, it's like some people, you know, like you gotta be on, you gotta be on or, and some people like it. I just not my thing and I don't have to be, so I don't, um, 
All right, let's see if we can find that because I think we can make that happen. Um, assuming I can remember where the project is. Oh, don't do that. Where are we? Open recent. Twitchbot alpha. What was that? Doesn't tell me. Uh, in here. There we go. I've been moving stuff around a lot, so I'm kind of don't know where anything is anymore. Um, uh, so. SVA to get the virtual environment going, and then so this whoops wrong. Let's see if that fires up. Yeah. Okay, cool. So now I can actually just do this, and I can move that right up here. Oh, not quite. Uh, I need to, I'll have to play with that a little bit, but I can make that happen. Hey, congrats on the new gig. Uh, what's your, uh, is it like nice and new or like, what are you doing? I don't know if that's a weird question to ask across the stream. If it is, don't answer. I don't know. Um, yeah, this is cool, actually. So I've got the I've got the text right up there. Awesome and new, excellent. Those are the best kind of news. Redis Labs, as in Redis, Redis, like. Like the best Redis experience. Wow, that's cool. Sweet, congratulations. I mean, on the g gig in general, but then also specifically, that sounds like a cool. Has the potential to be a pretty cool gig. Um, the home of Redis. I love it. It's a great little line. That's really cool. Yeah, I've used a little bit of Redis before, but not a whole lot. And I mean, like the most basic, like basically hello world is as far as I got or the equivalent. Um, we, uh, we use it at work. Well, whatever other people use it at work. Um, the that's super cool. Site looks good too. Sweet. Oh, you got a blog. Look at that. I saw the word blog. Where'd it go? Tech blog. Oh, nice. Why'd that go to Chrome? Oh, because that's my Chrome browser. Um, hang on one second. Let me uh, do this because I'm going to throw that in my RSS reader, assuming that there's RSS on it. Kind of. Maybe not. I will. That is a giant, giant, giant thing. Okay, there we go. Whoops, that was too many. Nice. JD, okay, Java developers. I was I was mostly sure that's what that was, um, but not 100% sure. Right here, followed. Redis Labs, yep, there you go. Nice. 
What's your topic? I okay. That makes more sense. I wasn't thinking of them as a Java house. Um so okay, that that I'm with you there. YamelConf, wow. Oh, that's cool. It is Azure Spring like Java Spring? Is that that's what I'm thinking of? Am I thinking the right thing? Gotcha, yep, okay. Uh oh, their site is slow. Wah -wah. I've broken it. Maybe it doesn't load on Max. Oh my god, does it not load on Safari? <laughs> I don't think it loads on Safari. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, on Chrome, it comes up on Chrome. It did not come up on Safari. That's hysterical. Surely, surely that's just something out of whack right now and not a not a constant state. But yeah, we, we've done some Azure stuff before um, where uh, I'm mainly in the AWS cloud now but i'm not religious about any of that stuff um the the cloud service stuff in general just blows me away wherever you are um i keep running into all this uh all this so like we had a thing so i couldn't get on my vpn and i had a database issue that i needed to go deal with and so I could get in to like the database consoles on Amazon and do the stuff that I needed to do there. But I needed to get on and get to a command line so I could basically back, basically restore a table from a backup database into a prod database. But I wasn't on my, v my VPN wasn't working. And I was like, crap, I'm gonna have to like drive into the office and go get this. But then I realized what I could do, I fired up an EC2 instance that's inside the network use their console, their web-based console to get into that machine. And it was able to do everything I needed to do there without having to do anything. And just like, and then, and I mean, I fired up a full machine, did that for 15 minutes and then, and then cranked it down. Still kind of blows my mind. Like I know, I, I know that that stuff is just, it's just the way that things work now, but like, it's a mind shift for me. Like I'm not used to the whole thing of like, I'm just going to fire up a server, s use it on a web page inside of a network and then just kill it. Like, and then the same thing with the, with the database. It's like, I need, I, I fired up two of them to do my testing and then just killed them. Like it's all disposable. Right. Um, yeah. Right. And it was, it was cool too. Cause it, I really, I, I was thinking about it while I was doing it. I was like, is this, is this okay? Like, am I, this is working, but should this work? Like, I don't know. It was just a weird, weird experience. Like the Amazon has their thing and I'm sure Microsoft has a, has maybe the same thing too, but like the whole, uh, yeah, this is real life. Um, this whole thing of like treat, you know, treat your assets like cattle, not like pets. And that was one of the first times that I kind of re that, that really kind of clicked with me in terms of like, here's this co completely ephemeral box that just stood up, did some work, killed it. Blows me away. Um, and then, so like Hugo, right? On the on the S3 stuff, or like I don't have, so my site doesn't sit on a server. It's just a bunch of files sitting in S3 with a CDN in front of it. No server, no, no maintenance. And like, obviously you can get that stuff with like GitHub and do some other things like that too, but like, it's still kind of my stuff instead of sitting on like a GitHub 
thing or whatever. And again, I'm not, I don't care. It's just more of like the, the, the mental concept of it, of just like, I effectively have files just hanging out and they serve my site. Yeah, GitHub pages, yeah. I use them for a little while. I like them. I think I've actually still got a couple things on there, um, which I think, by the way, is a fantastic service. Like the the ability to kind of fire that stuff up, like is, again, it, it makes you, not, anything that makes me not have to run a server, I'm a fan of. Um, Cause like my old site, I, so I didn't quite, so I started to use GitHub pages, but there were some extensions and Jekyll that I wanted to use that I couldn't, that wouldn't work on pages, like for security stuff, which I get. So that's why I jumped to, to a, basically a server. Um, cause they, it wouldn't, and I guess I could have probably done the build locally and fired it up. Now that I think about it, I don't think I, that really occurred to me. Um, But yeah, so it's, I'm, all this stuff is just, it continues. Like I haven't got my, I was talking to some other people on stream last night or the other night about this. Like I still don't totally have my head readjusted for living in the world of the cloud basically, or the clouds. Um, my head is not in the clouds yet. That was awful. But like get there more and more. Oh, I don't know, GitHub Actions. For those. What part of the world am I in? Oh, uh, the Florida part of the world. Um, if that's, if uh, if you're asking, not the like metaphysical, like whatever, but now Florida. Oh, right on. Never been to Kansas City. Never been to Missouri. Is that true? I don't know if that's true or not. I feel like I might have been through there somehow. Uh, Automaker Perk Hello. Look at this. Hmm. Okay. What are these for CI? Like Jenkins or... Office connection to power CI and internet apps. I don't like the whoop whoop. It's all get up. Okay. Okay, cool. So they built all their own stuff. That's crazy. Yeah, I hadn't seen this yet. See so the other thing, it feels like there's so much new. It feels like we've hit another level of quality software coming out over the past few years. That's like, you know, the second or third revision of all of these things. Um, that just seems like more like we're refining. Well, it's progress, right? We're refining more and more of the stuff that we do. Um, building and testing with Python. I've been in Python these days. Sweet. Okay. All right. Using multiple Python versions sounds like a bad idea. Specific. That sounds like a better idea. Bitbucket pipeline. Yeah, I never use pipelines. I've. I think I installed something. At Bitbucket for a while. Couldn't you do private repositories for free with them for a little bit? A few of them, anyways. I think I did some Bitbucket stuff way back. Like eight, hey, yeah, cool. That's how they grab market share, yeah. Um, because that was, I just remember like GitHub, did, and it's still the thing, right? Yeah, yeah, same. Um, the that's when I was first kind of figuring out Git and figuring all that stuff out. Um, didn't they? Was what was the other one? Mercurial? Was that the other thing that was like Git? Am I making that up? Okay, Mercurial, yeah. I 
Are they still alive? Initial release. Ah, it looks like they're still alive. 42 days ago. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, the ever popular. Which one's better? Like, I'm a sole developer, so I don't use 99.59% of the stuff. Uh, yeah, so Python in both places. Um, the the I actually don't do a lot of coding at work. Um, in fact, I do very little coding at work. Uh, I used to do more a few years back, um, and some of that stuff. Uh, I started I started with Perl in the 90s. Um, was with Ruby for a while and with Python, but I've never kind of really been a developer developer. Um, so one of the reasons I've been doing these streams is to do more, is to get more into it and do more Python. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> the 90s. Arr. I mean, I was two in the 90s. That's not true at all. Um, yeah, no, I, uh, I was around when the uh, when the first web browsers really hit. That's actually what got me into this. Was doing uh, was doing web stuff, um, and then did that for years. And then uh, over the past few years, I've kind of split off into more of a like analytics gig. Um, but yeah, so I'm 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 really enjoying Python, but I'm still not. But it's one of those things, right? Like once you know kind of the core fundamentals of the basic types of languages you can kind of figure and then you've got google and stack overflow like i can make i can make pretty much anything i want to have happen happen after banging my head into it for a while which is you know i'm not i'm in no way fast or um skilled in that way or skilled in the like the ah, i just got everything in my head but like we can figure it out right um, cause it's not, I, I, I'm, I'm finding myself through this practice, getting better at it or learning it more and getting more and stuff in my head. Um, but that's not really my goal. My goal is to do things. So I happen to pick stuff up at the same time. Cool. Um, I mean, very cool. Like I, I'm not dismissing that in any way, form or fashion. Um, but it's not, I'm not learning it to learn it i'm learning it because that's a part of what i'm doing um if that makes sense i don't know that got a little weird um but whatever um but i enjoy it i like it it's uh i i really liked ruby when i was playing with ruby like the syntax really made sense to me um but there was and so one of the reasons though i moved over to python a little bit was uh Django because I was trying to do some website stuff and I was playing with Ruby on Rails but Ruby on Rails doesn't have built-in user authentication and authorization you have to like install one of these like there's two like main modules or there used to be this was a few years back but there's like these two main modules that everybody installed and like everybody used them but I was like you know I don't something about the not something like the fact that it wasn't built into Rails always just made me like cringe um because this is just like me doing like kind of personal stuff and it's like i didn't want to have to deal with that extra stuff even though it kind of would have felt the same i'm sure but so like django all that user stuff is built straight in excuse me is built straight in so like that was actually one of the reasons i started seriously looking at python was because it's like okay i can get a web framework and the web framework has user interaction built into it. I don't have to make any decisions. I don't have to worry about the security of it. I don't have to worry. Like it's, it's, it's all, and they call it batteries included is literally the, the thing that they, they, they talk about. Um, cringe worthy. What's that Ruby or Ruby on rails or like the user auth stuff or all of the above. Where's that font? That's the other thing we need to find. Oh, really? So, uh, okay. I didn't know that. Is it like bad, bad or like just kind of yeah, bad? Yeah, 
And that's the thing. Like I've heard, I've heard some other things recently about some other um, developers or people who are around in the community or whatever. That it's like I've I've liked their stuff, but I don't. I'm not in worlds where I hear about people getting bad. Oh, okay, got gotcha. you. Right, right. Um. But yeah, so and, and Django, like, so the funny thing with Django is I've spent a bunch of time trying to fight through their official tutorial, and it just doesn't click with my brain. Um. So my crazy fool self um has started making my own tutorial which was just me figuring out it was basically me learning like i, I take notes and do stuff for myself when i'm doing that kind of thing but i was like i framed it in my head it's like i'm gonna make a tutorial out of this because i just kept fighting it and fighting it and finally i'm starting to kind of get my head around it oh jet baron tomato i think that's on PyCharm. charm isn't that what PyCharm charm uses yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. I dig it. It's super nice. I uh, I remember when I was first kind of firing up PyCharm and I was just, I, I did a little bit of that like, huh. All right. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty solid. Um, Yeah, it's funny because I don't even know like, well, I don't actually know what this one is. I like this one too. What is this one? Menlo. Which I think that's a Microsoft one, isn't it? Um, but I like this one too. And it also looks good at normal size. This, Yeah, so this is the size that I look at stuff when I'm not uh, streaming. Uh, I stream try and target if somebody's got a, like if somebody has a, a like a, a small laptop and they're looking at it on youtube and the or the twitch and their windows only this big i try and make the fonts pretty big but like it's it's a lot of that uh all right hang on a second let me see what was the name i want to go back to where's our Oh, I'm guessing you can't see the uh, the fonts or the the code really um, on your phone. Uh, I I don't think I'm targeted that for that size. Um, that's interesting. I should I wonder what the stats are on that about people watching from their phone. Okay, yeah. So hopefully you can see the see the text. Um, I'll have to look at that at some point actually. Not tonight. Um, wow. Whoops. Ah, political text. Blech. Uh, where did our page speed thing go? Um, whoops. Yes, yeah, I think this is more. That's pretty close to actual regular size compared to, you know, that. Uh, here's a page for insights. So I want to see. Oops. Bring it. Oh, wow. That was big. Um, all right. So let's look and see. Uh, would it be little themes, 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 themes. So what we're trying to look for now is I want to see, uh, oh, they all have the word font in it. Of course. Um, how about the word Baskerville? Well, let's do it this way. Variables CSS. Okay, I want to see where this font's coming from, and I want to see if I can figure out where it's being used. Serif primary. 
Baskerville because I'm trying to figure out if it's worth having that font in there. Like my fight, my site loads fast enough or whatever. I just want to see what the difference is if it's not there. Also, oh, it's cached. Okay, that's it wasn't loading, but it was already in cache. It, that has to be it. Be it. Wait, why don't I need it? You lost me. It's already included. So I do kind of want to play with fonts, but I just I, I can't figure out why it's like how it's being called. Or it seems like it's not being called because there's another one that I saw. Where is the thing that they talked about? Yeah, see this W O F F. isn't being called or it doesn't exist which is weird seems like it should g static nope uh that doesn't make any sense at all leverage the font display what maybe that's just what comes down from when you make the call? That seems weird. I don't understand how that works. Oh, maybe that's what comes down. I bet that's it. That's actually what that's actually what gets served back, maybe? He says, guessing. All right, so here's the question. If we do, what does this look like? Does that work? So I wanna see, what does the site look like like this? I don't think it stopped. I don't think it reserved. All right, we're gonna spin our, uh, Oh, uh, I don't know how I did that. All right, reserve. Tell me all the non monospace. Yeah, right. So again, this still feels like it is. Font family. Wait a minute. That's just rolled back to Helvetica. That's not anything special. But is that. That doesn't make sense. Oh, so here's Helvetica. Oh, Serif primary. That's. Okay. Well, step one figure out which font we're talking about. I don't have any serifs on the site. Oh, maybe that's this. I don't need that font for those. Hang on. Look up. Show me this. Palatino. Okay, so that's the one. Nope. That's secondary serif. I don't know where the primary serif is being used. Because there's not really anything else on the pages. That's sans serif. Oh, maybe it's this? For the text? That's it, okay. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm not seeing a whole lot of difference. All right, so now we know where we're going. Let's look at a piece of text or something with text in it. Uh, something with text in it that's not just all links. There we go. That'll work. I think there's some stuff in there, right? Uh, let's look at paragraphs. Do we have any paragraphs? Yeah, I'm not seeing much either. Um, all right, there's a paragraph of text. I didn't see it change. I don't think it changed. It thinks that's times. Okay, so how about this? That changed. I saw that change. All right, so now we can do Maybe, how do we do two tests? I do kind of like that. And again, like this is such nitpicky stuff. Like, I mean, we're talking like a half of a second. But I really can't tell a difference. I, did that change again? I can't tell a difference. I'm gonna have to screenshot this in a second just so I can see. No, they, so this is a theme that I got um, off of the Hugo site uh, called Tail, and then, or it's it's based off Tail. I edited a bunch of it because it did a whole bunch of other things that I didn't really like. I just wanted to get to somebody. So it's been so long since I've done anything CSS wise. I just wanted basically a basic framework that I could get set up off of. So it's like, here, just show me headlines and dates. Um, and then, and it had descriptions, so I ripped out the descriptions. And then it's just like, and then show me just a, a nice basic page with, um, it was originally light gray text. Um, but I, um, do you know Cory Doctoro by any chance? Have you heard of that name? Um, he, uh, so I, he, he's a writer. I don't know if you've heard of him. Um, but I tweeted something and he retweeted it, which was awesome. Um, and, but then he also tweeted me back and he's like, Hey man, I was looking at your site. Uh, that gray, you know, the lighter gray text on a white background is actually hard for people like me to read because I, he has like contrast issues. And I was like, Fair enough. I will make it pure black or white because, like, I'd heard that stuff before, but I'd never really heard it from a person. Um, but getting to, but I'm so used to actually now the black and white now. It's like that's cool. It's fine. But like, you can. It's not as like designy or whatever. Um, but like, that's not really my site's not really like a designy thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I'm. I'm trying to push towards accessibility in general with stuff. Um, and that's, so I, that was one I hadn't, it hadn't, it just hadn't occurred to me because I just had the theme and that's what it was on the theme. And it's like, Ooh, that's nice. But it never occurred. And then he was like, think about this. And I was like, done change. Okay. So we're going to screenshot something. Where's a good paragraph of text. All right. That'll do whatever. And also, I'm going to put this to my normal... Whoops, I did the wrong one. I'm going to put this at my normal size, which I think is that. Actually, hang on a second. I just want to look at this the way that I'm really... that people really look at it. Which I think is there. Right? Right. Okay. So we're going to screenshot this. Oh. So we're going to screenshot this. And that was times which makes sense because that was times okay cool now see if it changes didn't change maybe I gotta change something on a page to make it go that doesn't look like it changed font family really okay so that's the that's the other font
Where's my finder? Oh, maybe it's here. Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, screenshots. Some show me screenshots. Always takes a second to catch up. That's the same font. It did not change. I don't believe it changed. It says it changed. Okay, that comma's moving. All right, I'm doing away with it. Uh, if I if I come back at it later, like I've spent enough, more than enough time on this. Like, oh wait, I'm not calling it. Oh crap, I wonder if that's what's going on. Okay, now that might look different. Maybe. I don't know. I've been looking at this stuff so many times. Come on. Get there. There we go. Okay. That is definitely different. Now I understand. Okay. Ooh, I do like the second one better. Yeah, I like that better. Okay, that's worth it. That's fine. Um, that, that was a long expiration to expiration? X. What's the explore word? Exploration. Um, to get there. But now nah, that looks better. Okay, cool. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, clarity sign. All right. Take a look at that now. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, ooh, icons. I love icons. Icons are my favorite. Pattern accessibility application. All right. Ooh, color palettes. Nice. Wow. So this is, yeah, it's a full on. Interesting. I will bookmark this. Uh, oops, I had this too. Nice. So can you run it? I'm assuming you can run it without Angular, right? You can just pick the rest of the stuff. Because I'm not particularly, okay, cool. I'm not particularly interested in going to Angular. Um, I, I run an Angular site. Well, we have an Angular site, whatever, at the office. Um, and it's not my favorite. Um, for whatever. Use it like cheat sheet. Not nice. Yeah. Oh, I gotcha. Right. Data grid. Hello. I like data grids. Oh. Custom cell rendering. Nice. I don't know what the smart iterator is. like the look of it. It's a sharp looking site. And again, yeah, so this is one of those, it's kind of funny for me because like this would actually draw a little bit of them saying, hey, it's it's a kind of a light gray with a darker gray, but it's not as 
punchy as it could be. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, I, I go back and forth between wanting to kind of mess with the site a little bit um, and actually like tweaking it out. Like I used to do that stuff all the time and I kind of haven't been in the headspace to do it, but I think I might kind of be getting back into that headspace. So, but I don't want to, I don't want to have to do all of it. So I like having, like, I like, I just like having all the tools in the toolbox is basically what it is. So this is a really good looking tool. Um, yeah, it's pretty slick. Um, I will pay attention to that. Uh, all right, let's do try and find one other thing. Cause there's another way that these people talked about Under blocking scripts, which is not what we had. Yeah, so hang on. Call web font. It's like I'm assuming at some level that the person who built this knows what they're doing. I almost don't know if I want to get into this. Yeah, so while well, FontFace is excellent for fonts that are hosted on our own servers, maybe situations where hosted font solutions better. Google Fonts offers this. The following is an example of using import to load Google Fonts. See, that's not how. Similarly, you could link the same asset as you would in a CSS file in the, I'm assuming that says head of the document, rather than CSS. Ah, <laughs> your example busted. This is, that's what I want to look at right there. There's a lot going on on that page. Code. Oh, there's nothing in it. There really is nothing in it. Ah. <laughs> uh, so I guess we can bring that back to decent size. Oh, thank you. Self hosted. Call Google Web Font. Quick example. Yeah, so that's how they're doing it. It's funny because this is... Real style sheet, fonts, Google API. Yeah, this is funny because this is this is what they're complaining about, even though it's the way that they tell you to do it. Um, and again, so I'm, I'm just kind of still learning at this point about this stuff. Like, I'm not super worried about it. Um, consider delivering crucial CSS inline and delivering all non-crucial. Yeah, so it's like, and again, it's like, it's an opportunity. I guess it's not really, they're not saying like, this is critical or whatever. Um, but yeah, so the, so it's it's costing me whatever eight tenths of a second, um, assuming it's not cached, which probably it's cached in lots of places. Um, I don't know. Well, if it's popular font, it's probably cached. I don't know if it's popular or not. Um, but like, I go I go back and forth between that. Like, ooh, I really want to have it go like super fast, but like my site's fast enough. It's fine. Um, 
and I, I do I do like that trade off of looking at that font um, after seeing actually doing the AB comparison. Um, uh, Google font popularity. Sort by popularity. Goof. Okay, I gotcha. It's when I get looking at fonts, and it's just like. Because like what you could do, like if if you could pick one of the more um, popular fonts, which would mean it has a greater likelihood of being uh, cached, whatever, like you're getting all meta on it, but. These are all sans serif, it's funny. Or, well, not all of them, but, you know. Wait, I just saw one. That wasn't, there you go. Oh, crimson text. I, so, I grew up in Alabama with the Crimson Tide. So we're definitely going to use crimson text. Uh, but what I would like to do... Oh, yeah, say, look, font samples. That's nice. Lipper Franklin is not what we're using. It's up there, though. L-I-B... Uh, Baskerville? There you go. So there's that, and there's the other one. Can we make them about the same size? See, and this is where I'm not, I don't have enough of an eye to know whatever. Oops, that was definitely big enough. We're going to try it. We're going to look at it. Uh, except I don't know how to do all that stuff. Uh, 400, 400i. 700. All right. So. Download family. Select the style. Oh, I could download it and serve it myself. Or I could just use theirs. About how do you. What's the actual name of it that I need to copy and paste? I love that we have all these resources. It's amazing. License. The open font license. Where is the link that I use? Select styles. Oh, select the style. Okay, so you do. Ha. Huh. And then where's 700? Just 700. Bed. Ah, so they're putting in now this swap, which is not something they did on mine. All right, we're going to switch it. Oops. Sweet. So that's that. Oh, it's funny. I think it went to CSS instead of CSS too. Yeah. Okay, so now all these are gonna break and we're gonna make a new window because we have 500 things open right now. Uh, 
Uh, there we go. That was not a good one. There you go. How about that one? Does that have text? Nope. Also a stream. I haven't written much on the site. There we go. Okay, so this is... That has to be times. Yeah, but I don't think it really is. Yeah, the font isn't loaded. That Okay, so that's what the difference was. The font wasn't loaded. Oh, it's auto blank. Look at that. That'll be confusing. I liked, I, I liked Little Brother. So I've only read the first one. Um, it has a different feel than lots of books that I've read, but it's interesting um don't know you at all but i can say i enjoyed it is um and i've recommended it to a couple friends so give it a shot um it's it's like one of those ya books uh, young adult novels so it's not a heavy read um the one that i really liked of his So if, again, without knowing you at all, if I had to, if I did just out of the blue recommend one of his books, I would say um, Walk Away is the one that I would go with. Um, I think it's called Walk Away. Ah. Yeah, walk away. Um, I think that's a better book than Little Brother. Um, it's a different, it's a different tone. It's a different style. It's also, I think, it's a more mature book. Um, so, go with that if you're gonna pick one. But if you're looking for a lighter read, I think Little Brother, Little Brother is probably a lighter read. So it kind of depends on where your headspace is, right? Um, Okay, now I can see the fonts changing. I understand what I'm looking for now. Uh, he read some other ones that got a lot of play. One a long time ago, I think it was called Down and Out in the Magic Kingdom. Um, that I read, that's, that's fun. Um, it, but it's, I'm not sure, like it, it was of a time and I, so it doesn't I like I wish I had read it when it was first out and when I was that age. I think it would have had more of a thing. Uh, OK, how do we get. So what all has Libra in it? OK, self primary fonts. Oh, do I just need to change this in one place and it goes because that would be awesome. Oops, that's super tiny. But if we make it bigger. Which I don't know how to do. I feel like that's definitely still auto playing. I'm going to do it again. It is. Stop. Oh, I guess I could turn the volume down. Um, oh, this would have to be done everywhere. So base. Uh, this is where I'm going to get myself in trouble. Um, Oh, 
put on prod. Get at that. Before messing with CSS. Uh, and then we're also just gonna do this. Prod themes. And just do the hard backup. Uh, we should call it something different. Let's call it that. All right, now I feel slightly safer. I don't know if I'm gonna like this font, but maybe that was just because it was too small. Didn't make it bigger. All right, what are we doing with it? Where do we get our size from? Not from there, okay. 16 HTML, okay. So do that. 19, if that was 16. Hmm. Don't think I like that as much. Whoops, that's gonna be very big font. Hey, look at my new site. It's awesome. It's like a performance art piece. All right, what I really need to do, right, is take some snappy shots of this. So there's that. And then we're gonna go back here. And so this was 16. And this was this. That ain't it, because I don't think it's downloading the font. It is. Crap. I swear I can't tell the difference anymore. So there's two. Okay, so that's just straight times, right? Where'd it go? Times. So let's give it a fighting chance by at least making that 21 or 22. Hmm, see that doesn't look awful when you make the font size big enough. All right. I'm about to get tired of this. I mean, I'm kind of already tired of it, but I, this, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to put in a little more effort on this and then it's gonna be like, okay, we're done. We're just gonna go with what's there. Why aren't those there? Okay. So that's crimson. That's Libra. And that's whatever. And see, this is the thing, like I can't, ooh, I like that one better. I really do, I don't know why. Yep, that's the winner. For reasons I cannot explain at all. It just feels right. Okay, well we spent a lot of time, but we figured out that like, uh, see that's the thing with this stuff, right? I don't feel bad at all about the fact that I ended up in the same place I started because now I have a whole bunch more information about stuff that wasn't as good. So it's like, I'm, I'm cool with it. Um, yeah, so it's, there's the decision though. We made it, we, f we found it. We, uh, we, we fought our way through it. Uh, now how do I put everything back? So that was that. 
and then this can go away. This can come here. This can go away. This can come here. Base is 16, and then we only need... Now, the one thing that they did have that's different, though, that I think I'm going to put in as this display swap, which I think lets it... go faster for the little bit. Um, we're gonna look that as the last thing up, I think. Display, swap, font, web. Swap. Gives the font face an extremely small block period and an infinite swap period. Uh, the font display descript determines how the font face is displayed based on whether and when it is downloaded and ready to use. Gives the font face an extremely small block period and infinite swap period. Okay. If the font face is not loaded, any element attempting to use it must render a fallback font. If the font face suddenly loads during the tra transition, d suddenly loads during this period as used normally. Okay. Okay, yeah, so this is the invisible stuff that they're talking about that they don't like. And I go back, I, I kind of, I may actually go to block on this. Because I don't like the flash that happens on some sites where it's rendering and it renders text in one font and then it jumps. I find that more off-putting than it taking a half second longer to actually load. Um, that's clearly not what their their guidance is. But that's one I may uh, I may jump back around on. Right, yeah, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna look at that it, it, again. My, the, the, my thing's so fast, like as long as you're on a, even a semi decent connection, it shouldn't matter. Uh, but I'm gonna keep an eye on that because if I like if I start seeing it pop, well, and so interestingly. Well, it kind of depends on what page you hit because if you hit the home page first that font isn't on it but it download it so it'd be in your cache it's but most people are going to go directly to pages anyways because that's how they're going to get to it um so and now i'm looking at this and i can't tell if that's the right font or not i think it is i hope it is yeah that's it I swear, so I haven't, like, I haven't paid attention to the font on the site at all, and now I'm looking at it, I'm like, is that right? Is that good? What's going on? Because, um, like, I, once I start looking at that stuff, it's like, would it be better like this? Would it be better like that? I, I can just wrap myself around a tree doing that. Um, but this is fine. I like the way this looks. I'm not going to worry about that. I think, hopefully, this is the right one. Is this the right one? Please tell me it's the right one. Yes, okay. Whew. And if we turn this off now, that's where we can actually see it. So when the font loads and then there's the font unloaded. Sweet. Yeah, because like, so if it started to load like this and then all of a sudden it jumps like that, I don't like that. Like that to me is is much more jarring and off-putting than just having it be like a little bit of uh, blank text for a little bit. Um, but we'll see. Uh, and so just for fun, we'll deploy real quick. Because the only, I think the only real change. Oh, I, yeah, I actually, de I hadn't deployed with the CSS in line yet. So, th this build did every page on the site, right? Because it's, it's the header and included in everything, so that's all of it. Um, or maybe I did it and I just made some other changes to it. I don't know what's going on. We'll figure it out. Do do do. All right, 
Cloud fronts up. Probably goes pretty quick. And the other thing that messes with me is the sizes of all this stuff. Cause I'm saying like that, I think is normal size as compared to like where I normally have it for stream, which is there. Uh, there we go. I mean, yeah, that loads fast. YouTube took a while there. Uh, here we go. Yes, this, <laughs> I want to find one without a video. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, I saw it. I, I think I saw it bump right there. I'm probably hallucinating. Yeah, I've, I've hit that point too. Um, not totally. Well, I'm okay with it at the smaller sizes, but I have noticed that I don't mind it nearly as much as I thought I would when I have it set up for the stream stuff. It's like, shouldn't this be feeling like it's giant? And like it is, but like not as much as uh, one would have thought 20 years ago. Um, I don't know. I like it. I think that's good. Like I haven't changed. I actually haven't changed anything. So, oh, actually, I know what I want to do. Um, let's see what it says now. Because I switched over that. Oh, still ninety five. Come on. Nothing changed. Yeah. So it's still that one font that it doesn't like. But like I, I want that to go. I want that to be in there. And it's, it's, that's worth it for me for the, even though that's so wait, 1.4 seconds. Uh, those numbers are different, but like, so if it's two and a half seconds and 1.4 of that is the render blocking stuff, that's percentage wise. That's huge. Um, but total relative time. I'm not super worried about it. Um, especially when that gets cached. Why does it have all these? Can't click on them. Um, I do, I, I, I do want it faster though, <laughs> which is ridiculous. Um, Nah, no, I can't, I can't think of any, like, there's not a, there's not a way to do that. Um, at least I can't think of one to do that. Cause it's like, I want, I want that font, the font, and I want the font to load prior to the page render so that you don't get that flash as much as possible. Uh, so that's the way it is. Um, yeah, so that's mobile desktop 99. All right. Oh, weird. What now? Why is it? Oh, okay. So they're giving you connection speed estimates. So it's faster on desktop than on mobile. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. They're doing a significant jump too. Now what I could do, I don't think I need the 700. I'm not going to mess with this anymore tonight. I'm done. But, um, that would be something else to look at at some other point if I get back into this, which I, I'm probably like, I don't know about you, but I do the thing where it's like, I want to, I want to kind of get something in a position and a uh, set up and I'm like, okay, I'm good with this. I don't, I, I, I'm not going to need to think about it again for a while. Um, but yeah, there's no, I'm not calling the, any other, oh, it would, that would be bold. Never mind. Sorry. That would be bold. You'd want to have this. Forget I said that too. So. Get out, dot. I like it. Actually, I just did that. I think. Oh yeah, browsing history changed. Um, that's the only one. Boom. Sweet. <laughs> ah, thanks, man. Um, cool. Yeah. So that's, uh, that, that will 100% wrap it for me. I don't know what time zone you're in, but whenever you check out for the evening, have a good evening. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll catch you around, uh, one of these other times. Been a pleasure. Uh, we'll see you. Have a good one.
Be safe, be kind, and uh, take care. See you, man.